me, please do follow me on my social media accounts which will be posted. Hi guys, this is Neil Pavivo and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you will be notified when my next upload will be. If you want to know more about me, please do follow me on my social media accounts which will be posted right here. Okay, so uh, without further ado, let's start. A lot of people have actually been asking me to make a video about my current work, which is being an air traffic controller. I will try my best to speak in English because I want not just my Filipino audience to be able to understand this video, but also those subscribers who are not from the Philippines. I work as an air traffic controller of the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines, and I am currently assigned at the Manila Aerodrome Control Tower. I was actually part of a training program called the Civil Aviation Officer Candidate Scholarship Program and we were part of the third batch. The name of our batch was Sinagtala, which means the Guiding Star. I will walk you through time as to how I was able to land this job or how to be able to be in this job. So first thing is the application process. The application process, like any other job, you just have to submit the documents that they are requiring you. After passing my requirements, we just have to wait for uh, the officers or the in-charge to check our documents if they are complete or if there are missing documents. Then once the documents are all set up, they will give you your exam permit. So right after passing your application forms and all the requirements, they will give you the schedule for the written examination. So, I took the exam basically without any knowledge about stuff. I didn't review for anything. I was 25 years old already during that time. That was actually a challenge for me because applying for this job wasn't really the very first plan that I had in mind. Basically, there were a lot of scope of the examination. Fast forward to six days. Announcement of those who passed the examination. So they told us to check the website of the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines. I was really very hesitant to check the website because, you know, after the exam, I told myself, ah, I'm not, I'm not really wishing so much to pass this examination because that was very hard. But then, who knows what happens, right? If it's the will of God, for you to pass and you did your best during the exam then i think it's not just sheer luck that you pass you will pass the exam but everything fell into place so i said from letter a i immediately scrolled down to letter l so my last name is Lovindino. so i checked in thank goodness because i passed the exam like there were only more than a hundred of us who passed the examination after passing the written examination the next step for us was to attend the panel interview. Like any other job, you need to be assessed by those people whom you will be working with. There were five of them who interviewed us and you know, the usual stuff, they will uh, assess your personality and they will get to know more about you, the way you answer the questions. And one very memorable question that I was asked, one of the panelists asked me, you know that there are facilities up from Basco Batanes down to Holosolo. Would you want to be assigned anywhere else in the country? So I told them that I think it is more of a responsibility than a choice. If it is what entails the job, then I'd be more than willing to do that. That was the most casualty answer that I had in an interview. And they asked a lot of questions about me, both personal and technical ones. They asked my experiences and so on and so forth. So fast forward. I received a notification on the, the 9th of May, if I'm not mistaken, about my schedule for the physical examination and the endurance test. Initially, they asked us to submit some medical examinations beforehand so that when we arrive at the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines, they will just have to verify the results and uh, conduct the endurance test. So basically, that was just a general examination, physical examination. Uh, next thing was that endurance test because the Cow CSP training is actually quasi military. So they have to test if we are capable physically in doing drills and in doing exercises. One very crucial point during the physical examination was the eye test. 
the most important thing is that we need to have a 2020 vision and we should not be colorblind. I say again, no colorblind applicants are accepted. So I'm very thankful that I have pretty good eyesight. My vision is 2020 and I am not colorblind at all. We were informed that the training will commence on July of 2017. So I resigned from my work. The start of our training was July 10. From Manila, we were transported to a place somewhere down, southern part of uh, the National Capital Region, for our indoctrination. So basically, that's the orientation phase. So they will tell us about the whole training process, we're going to expect, and a whole lot more. So after the indoctrination was the training proper. It was actually subdivided into three phases. So the first phase is the general phase wherein we, we have to study as a whole batch in a conference room. All the general information about the job were discussed during this phase. The next phase of uh, our training was actually the facility rotation. So during this part, we were divided into groups. So there were four groups. We were actually composed of 13 members in each group. There were a lot of facilities involved in air traffic control. I will uh, discuss to you more about that in other videos, maybe. Or I will direct you to a link that would explain better. After the facility rotations was the seminars at the end of the training. So we had safety management system, gender sensitivity and development training, Basically, the whole training process was very rigid. There's no second chances when you when you fail a practical examination. We also had to prepare for our graduation. We prepared a graduation video. We practiced for our graduation ceremony. We graduated June 5th of 2018. We were then asked to report immediately to the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines to do some paperwork like contracts to secure all necessary documents that will be needed for employment. Before we can actually control, we need at least to have our license. That's the very basic thing that all controllers should have. In securing our ATC license or air traffic control license, we had another set of exams, computer tests, Another one is a skills test. I still remember that I was able to receive my ATC license September of 2018. So that's when I was already allowed to control, but with the assistance or the guidance of more senior officer. So basically, that's the whole process of my journey as an air traffic controller of the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines. If you want to know more about this job, please do check the description box because I will be posting links about air traffic control. Likewise, I will be sharing other videos of me doing air traffic control stuff and doing things related to air traffic control. So that's it. Thank you very much guys for watching this video. I hope you like it and uh, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you are new to this channel and of course follow me on my social media account. If you want me to do something on my next videos, please comment down below. If you want to apply as an air traffic controller of the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines, you have to constantly check postings on their social media accounts. That's it guys, thank you very much. Once again, this is Neil Pavivo. Bye!